Hey, it's your local fish keeper Sabrina. How's everyone doing? I hope you are well. Today we're going to look into how to deworm our puffer fish and any fish really. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. For starters, why do we need to deworm our puffer fish in the first place? Most puffer fish sold in stores are wild caught, so they're very prone to internal parasites and parasites in general. So what are the common signs of fish having internal parasites? Firstly, usually they're very thin looking emaciated fish. Secondly, there may be presence of loss of appetite or no appetite at all. And thirdly, of course, the presence of white stringy poop, not to be confused with empty fecal casts. So when do we treat them for parasites then? Of course, when they have any of the signs mentioned previously and also as a prophylactic treatment. Prophylactic treatment is when we give someone a type of medication in order to prevent a disease from occurring. I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again. The only prophylactic treatment that I do, especially during my rescue days, and the only one that I recommend is dewormers, given that your puffer is free from any other signs of illnesses. If your puffer fish looks healthy and fine, I really don't recommend treating them with antibiotics or any other medication besides dewormers as this is going to cause them harm in the long run. Especially with antibiotics, you don't want them to develop antibiotic resistance. Before I start naming meds, a full disclaimer, I am not a professional vet but I do have experience in deworming puffers and fish. If you are unsure of something, please seek professional help for further confirmation. Now, now that's out of the way, what are the dewormer meds that I recommend to treat both internal and external parasites? The most effective combo by far is a levamisole hydrochloride based medication with a praziquantel based medication. Levamisole hydrochloride treats nematodes, roundworms, nodular worms, and hookworms. Praziquantel, on the other hand, treats trematodes or flukes, cystodes or tapeworms, flatworms, and turbularians. So to conclude, Praziquantel treats whatever levamisole hydrochloride couldn't and both are not replacements for each other. Both medications are safe for freshwater, brackish and saltwater systems. I don't mix these two concoctions together, so what I'll do is I'll treat with levamisole hydrochloride first, finish that treatment and then followed by praziquantel treatment. So both are done separately. A few levamisole hydrochloride based medications that I recommend are Fritz Expel P and Isha in the X, but really anything will do. Another point that I would like to highlight is that if you are thinking of getting your meds from your local chicken co-op or cattle co-op or anything similar and you are unsure of the dosage or you are a complete beginner, I highly recommend getting an aquarium product made for fish as it will be much easier on you. So let's start off with Levamisole Hydrochloride based medication. Um, what I have in my hand here is Fritz Expel P. Levamisole hydrochloride is safe to treat inside your main tank, however, having a quarantine tank or a hospital tank is always ideal. Frix XPLP specifically says that it does not harm the biofilter, plants, other invertebrates or uninfected fish. So how do we treat with levamisole hydrochloride? Firstly, you have to take out your carbon, your secant purigen, or any chemical filtration that you have. Secondly, if you are using a UV sterilizer or protein skimmers, please make sure to shut them off as well. Levamisole hydrochloride is a light sensitive medication, so please switch off your lights during treatment. You can choose to maintain or increase aeration in the tank. With Fritz Expel P, one packet treats 10 gallons of water. It's actually time to get Eloise, the potato puffer fish, dewormed again, so she will be helping me demonstrate today. Please note that all of my puffers are dewormed, so you won't be seeing any dramatic changes. I prefer to mix my meds in a separate container first before adding them into my puffer's tank. Once you've added the meds, leave it for 24 hours. After 24 hours, perform a 25-50% to 50 water change and please clean your substrate to remove any excreted worms or parasites. However, the treatment does not stop there. You have to repeat the treatment every 7 days once for the next 4 weeks. Why? Simply because these meds are not effective against the parasite's eggs. The idea is you want to obliterate them when they are most vulnerable. At this point, some of you might be asking, wait a minute, is it that simple? 
Yes, Levamisole Hydrochloride gets absorbed through your puffer's skin and into their gut, so there's no need to infuse your puffer's food with meds. Next, let's look into Praziquantel. A few products that are available in the market are Prazi Pro and Prazi Gold. If your fish does not require any antibiotic treatment, avoid using medications that contain both Praziquantel and Metronidazole. With Prazipro, I personally prefer to treat my puffer in a separate hospital or quarantine tank. Also, it is not recommended to mix Prazipro with other medications as it may cause bacterial bloom or a cloudy water due to the solubilizing agent that they use. So how do we treat with Praziquantel? If you choose to treat inside your main tank and not a separate hospital tank, please perform a 50% water change first. Similar to Levamisole Hydrochloride, you have to remove your carbon, your secam purigen, your chemical filtration, and switch off your UV sterilizers and also your protein skimmers. You can choose to maintain or increase aeration in the tank. Shake the bottle of Prazipro vigorously before dosing it into your tank. The measurements for liquid Prazipro is a teaspoon, which is about 5 milliliters of Prazipro per 20 gallons or 76 liters of water. After 24 hours, perform a 25% water change and please clean the substrate to remove any excreted worms or parasites. Repeat treatment every 7 days once for 4 weeks. So let's say if you begin treatment on Monday, you repeat the treatment again next Monday. So how often should we deworm our puffers? Ideally, it should be every 6 months or at least once a year depending on their diet. I am aware that Levamisole Hydrochloride-based products might not be available worldwide, so I thought I would add in Flubendazole as an honourable mention. Flubendazole is in no way a replacement for Levamisole Hydrochloride nor Praziquantel, but it is better than nothing. Flubendazole treats gill flukes, some nematodes and protozoa. The thing with flubendazole is that if you want to treat internal parasites effectively, you have to mix it with your fish food. Gel food seems to be the best way to go about it, or you can choose to inject it directly into your frozen food of choice or soak it in with your pellets. Make sure to use a binder such as Seacam Focus. I know in a previous video, I've mentioned about the usage of garlic guard or any garlic product as a flavor enhancer, but now moving forward, I don't recommend it. Please note that flubendazole is not safe for invertebrates, including corals. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and you find it to be helpful. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment down below. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content, and please comment down below as I would love to hear your thoughts and read your comments. Until next time, have a lovely day, see you next time!